Now that they've announced that you can do your UCAT test at home this year, we're going to discuss whether it's better for you to go to the test centre or stay at home to do your university's clinical aptitude test. Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name's Dr. Ashley Hilton of futuredoc.co and I've just come back from my first bit of exercise since breaking my hand. Uh, I went for a jog, which to be honest is actually a little bit naughty because actually if you fell on it, it could be an absolute disaster. But it got to the stage where I was driving myself a little bit mad because I'm not allowed to work and see patients while I have to wear this splint 24 seven. So I thought I'd try a little bit and a little bit of light jogging, as long as you don't fall on it or do anything, shouldn't hurt too bad. But since they recently made the announcement that the UCAT test will be going ahead probably in August and that you can do the test at home, I've been getting a lot of questions from my students about what it's going to be like and whether they should do the test at home and take advantage of this new opportunity or whether they should do the old school way and do the test in a test center. So I've done a little bit of digging into exactly what the UCAT exam will be like if you were to sit at home. And once we have a better idea of how that's going to look, we'll then go on to discuss whether it's better to do the university clinical aptitude test in your own home or do it as they usually do in the test center. So the way that this exam will be performed at home is that you will have to download an app called OnView once you've booked your exam. The week running up to your exam, you have to download the software, open it up, make sure that it works on your computer. And also um, the P Pearson View, the company who arranged the UCAT exam, will ask you to perform some system checks as well as a few other checks. These involve things like sending a picture of your workplace so that they can see that you only have one monitor and you don't have any items there that will help you cheat in the exam. The other thing you'll have to do is verify your ID by sending a picture of that. And part of the system checks will also make sure that you've got an adequate internet connection to facilitate the exam. That's because the exam software on view will also be running a, a recording of you to check that you're not doing anything untoward. There will also be some live invigilators who will be checking in on you and, and kind of invigilating the same way that they would in, in real life, but obviously doing it by checking via webcam. Now, I know that there will be a lot of concerns about internet connection, especially since lockdown, everybody being on the internet has definitely caused their own internet connection at home to slow down. The system check will make sure that you have the right bandwidth for it and you will be able to perform the test without any problems. So when I was researching for this, I did ask them specifically what would happen if the internet connection or the video recording went down whilst you were in the middle of your exam. And what they said is the invigilator would then have to void that particular exam and send a case report to the exam board for them to review. Now, um, and as long as they deem that it's a good reason, which internet connection going down, should there should be no reason why that wouldn't be. What they do is then they re review it and then they grant you access to repeat the exam at a later date with no extra charge. The next obvious question is about the timing of the exam. Is it something because it's on the internet that I can do at any time? Do I still have to book a slot? Well, the answer is, you still have to book a date and time and actually turn up at that time at your computer to sit the exam. This is because they have a limited number of invigilators and they have to increase that amount to be able to monitor people over webcam. So you still have to book a, a date and a time slot and be on time for that exam, sat at your computer with the app open, ready to go at the start time of your exam. So obviously you can't just rock up to your exam when you're on a, on a whim, when you feel like you're ready to do it. You have to plan it and book it ahead, which is good because it allows time and a, a, a goal to prepare for and gives you a revision timeline as well. So because of the limited number of invigilators that are available, it's really important that you make sure that you're alert to when the bookings will go online and book your slot and get in there early so that you get the right slot that you want for you. Now, they should, they say that they're, it's actually going to be a lot easier to find slots online because, because of social distancing, the in-test centers have got probably less than a third of the capacity that they normally have for allowing people to come and sit the test there. They're saying that usually they would have about 10 sittings a day and now they're only going to have about three. And that's purely just because social distancing rules so you can't have as many people in a confined space as normal. So this means that booking online will actually be easier than booking for the test centers. But it's the same every year. There's always a lot of demand, so it's always best to get in there early and book the 
right start that you want. And I'm sure being the morally conscious sage that you are, you haven't possibly thought about this, but I'll talk a little bit about cheating for this exam. Ahead of time, they ask you to send pictures and they ask you to remove any extra monitors that you have. They make sure that you don't have any phones available or within view or reach during the exam. And also they ask you to remove any smart watches or any other calculators or any other devices that could help you. The OnView app actually won't work if you've got any other applications or windows open on your laptop or desktop when you do the exam. So this means that you won't be able to go to other internet sites or you won't be able to screen record or anything like that while you're doing the exam. If you want to go to the toilet during your exam, you have to let the invigilator know and then you have to turn off your screen while you go to the toilet. For this reason, I strongly, strongly recommend that you do everything that you can to avoid any of these distractions during the exam, because this is gonna be a massive inconvenience and potentially quite stressful if you can't get it to work again. I'm sure there are probably ways around the things that I've just said, but realistically, you shouldn't want to cheat anyway. You should want to do the best that you can for your own sake and actually earn your place rather than cheat your way there. The way that the UCAT exam is anyway wouldn't really lend itself to cheating. It's a contextual bit of text and you're going back and forth between text and answers. It's not memorized answers that you can go and look up on Google. So really the only thing that flicking between screens would serve to do is waste time. It's a contextual exam and you don't need anything other than the information that's already on the screen. So now that we know what the university clinical aptitude test is going to be like when you sit it at home, Let's discuss whether you should do the UCAT in your own home or whether you should still book ahead and go to the test center. I think the answer to this question is a very personal one. It really depends on what kind of person you are and what you like. For example, if you're the kind of person who gets stressed out from exams, gets stressed out from the travel, from all from everything surrounding the exam day, then maybe sitting at home might be a good option for you. Because if you're in a familiar environment, you can control the environment, you know everything, you'll be a lot more relaxed. And when you're a lot more relaxed, you're a lot more aware. And that awareness will help you answer the questions better and ultimately perform better on exam day. It also means that you can control simple things like if you want to drink immediately before the exam, you're not having to think about taking a bottle of water or if you forget one, buying one. You don't have to think about the, the train. Like I know, for example, when I was at King's, I'd always used to have, get, have to get public transport, either a train or uh, sometimes, you know, I've had exams where trains were cancelled and then I had to get an Uber and then Uber, the traffic was terrible. And that's such a stressful thing to happen just before an exam. And I've turned up as they've been, you know, saying start in the exam. And that puts you in a terrible mindset to start and I'm sure it's affected my score. So when you're doing this exam at home, you'll be able to know where the toilets are, you'll be able to get a drink, you don't have to worry about travel. So this is a massive thing to kind of getting you in the right mind frame for doing an exam. If you've seen some of my other UCAT training videos, I constantly talk about the importance of replicating the test conditions as much as possible. Now, if you're doing this in your own home, obviously you'll be doing it on the same laptop or desktop that you're practicing your questions on already. You can almost replicate the test conditions to nearly 100%, which will, I think will have a massive advantage to your score and your performance in general. I would say the only drawback to doing it on your own laptop or on your desktop is that if you have a small screen, uh, often the questions are quite long and they go beyond the screen, both up and down and left to right. So, the, I mean, the simple remedy to that is check, get the app ahead of time and make sure that you're happy that everything fits on the screen well, you can see everything fine and make sure that you're scrolling down for, you know, next buttons or end exam, submit exam, all those sorts of little buttons that are usually in the corners. Make sure that you have familiarized yourself with the OnView app ahead of time and you're not kind of trying to find it out last minute in a panic on test day, which is only going to stress you out and probably hinder your performance. That's really my for and against for doing the test at home. However, I do think there is a case to be made for still doing it in the test center. If you're the kind of person who thrives under pressure, who likes you know, the big occasion of an exam or a sporting event or whatever it is, and you're the kind of person who will rise to that occasion, then you should definitely still consider doing it in the test center. If you consider sports people, for example, when someone gets to the FA Cup final and they go to Wembley or they get to the Super Bowl, it's a completely new environment. It's a new stadium that they've probably never been to before. And this makes them rise to the occasion. It kind of tells your brain that it's game time and you 
really need to step it up a gear. And this can be a way to motivate you and kind of raise your level to perform even better. So it's a case of really working out whether you're the kind of person who needs that comfort and relaxed environment to thrive, or you kind of need that kind of stimulation and high pressure situation so that you step up to the plate and raise your game for exam day. In the same vein, if you're thinking about doing your exam at home, I would take some time to select which room of your house that you want to do it in. Obviously, internet connection here is probably one of the biggest factors and you have to make sure that you have adequate internet connection wherever you are when you do the exam. But in the same way that a new venue will kind of raise your game and alert your brain that it's time to raise its level, being in a different room will kind of Although maintain that comfort will tell you that it will, t will tell your brain in fact that it's not just a regular practice day, this is actually test day, you're in a new environment and you need to really step up. I think ultimately this decision will come down to availability and deciding personally to you which environment you think you will thrive best in. I've pretty much covered all the information that's available on the web, but if you would like to read it, if you go to the Pearson View website, they have written guidance on what the home exam will be like if you want to read further about what we discussed today. I hope that's cleared up your questions and given you a better idea as to where you're going to sit your UCAT exam. As always, if you want some practice questions and some in depth lessons, go to my website, futuredoc.co. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well because I release regular videos as to how you can perform really well in the UCAT test. And finally, take care of yourselves, work hard, and thank you for watching my video. Your university's clinical admissions test. Aptitude test. Aptitude test. Uh, uh, what am I trying to say here?